Hello class, good morning. Good morning to all. So to my ABM, TBL, and new student, good morning to each of you. All right. Now, we're going to, we're going to discuss about history of hypertext. So in 1965, the terms hypertext and hypermedia coined by Ted Nelson, in his article titled Complex Information Processing, a file structure for the complex and changing and the indeterminate. So in 1992, he wrote, by now the word hypertext has become generally accepted for branching and responding text, but the corresponding word hypermedia, meaning complexes of branching and responding graphics, movies and sound as well as text, is much less used. Instead, they use the strange term interactive multimedia, four syllables, okay? Four syllables longer and not expressing the idea that it extends hypertext, okay? So why hypertext characteristic? In a hypertext system, the reader is free to navigate information by exploring the connections provided. Hypertext is a very different way of, of presenting information than the usual linear form. Text no longer flows in a straight line through a book. Instead, it is broken down into many smaller units. To borrow a term from literary criticism, each addressing a few issues. It acts as a bridge between two basic opposite and complementing elements that may be called gender of knowledge, representation, pre and short term. So advantages of hypertext, we have two things, simultaneous and timeliness. Okay. Now it is easier to have multiple windows available simultaneously as one of the most fundamental problems in writing is simultaneity. How about timeliness? Another possibility for hypertext is the expansion of the timeline. In a hypertext timeline, the points indicated on the timeline don't have to stand by themselves, and the reader doesn't even have to search a chapter or search through the index to find supporting information. Okay, how about multiple paths of injury exploration and let's skip this okay reader control a hypertext environment gives the learner control over paths of learning reader controls control allows the learner to make choices in navigating and manipulating the content on sites as well hypertext allows for a non-linear movement within a document with the option of quickly returning to the point of origin. Now let's skip this one. How about critical thinking? Hypertext allows readers to analyze information from multiple perspectives. Information gathered from different sources engages users in critical thinking as they make choices, discover, and problem solve their own route through the topic of being studied. Now, centering and decentering. As a learner uses hypertext, they determine the focus or center of investigation by choosing to move outside the limits set up by the author's navigational structure. All right. So that is hypertext class. Okay, for more examples, you may also search your Miriam dictionary or your what um your uh, your Google if you have net connection you may search it okay so don't forget to you know to study well about hypertext God bless you all.